I think this will be. I want to make it more complicated to make it simpler. Without that two there, it might be a little difficult to see. So let's do it with the two and then without the two. Okay. I think you're beginning to see how this goes. I look at the complicated part, which is log squared of x, and I tell myself that I see a power function. It's something squared. And before I go even further, I think I do mentally check. Okay, it's the log squared. Do I also see the derivative of log in there, in the mix? And yes, I do. It's 1 over x. It's not written to the right or to the left or broken out so cleanly. So that's what makes this example a little bit more subtle than the examples we've done until now. But it is there. So it's the square of log, so I'm all gearing up to do the inverse power law. But, I, but before I go in that direction, I have to make sure that the derivative of log is mixed in, and it is. So it's log, and it's got to be to the third power, and it's got to be of x, because that's log of something, so that's the x. And I just know that the 3 I need to make up for with 1 third. And now I will just check that I, that I got it all right. I think with a little bit of experience, you'll know that that's all there is to it except plus c. Okay, let's do this in reverse now. We're taking the derivative of natural log to the third power, so it's the power of something. So it'll be 3 times that something to the second power. Great, exactly what I have, log squared of x, times, rolling with the chain rule, the derivative of log, which is right there. And so I'm done.